Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I would very much like to share with you some thoughts and comments that I have with regard to a film from the great and extraordinary filmmaker from Japan, whose name is Takeshi Kitano. This is a film from 1998, and it is among his most popular and most acclaimed works, an extraordinary achievement in and of itself. The name of the film is Hanabi. Hanabi is sometimes referred to in English as fireworks, although it is also referred to in English under its Japanese title of Hanabi. This happens to be the Japanese Blu-ray that I have uh, right here. What to say about this uh, dynamic film? It is a very energetic and uh, quite frenzied work in terms of the bursts of energy and violence that we have come to know from the works and world of Kitano's cinema. This is a film that is also infused with a, a tremendous amount of sorrow and pain and tragedy and pathos, thus making the film very uh, heartbreaking and filled with moments of pensive sadness and quiet contemplation about things that once were there but now are lost and how these characters who in their own specific ways have lost things in their lives, how they are trying to make do with what they have in the present, in the moment, and how they are dealing with their particular plights and their particular lots in life. So we have a variety of characters, but I think we have at the center the main character uh, whose name is Nishi, and he is a character played by uh, Takeshi Kitano, or Beat Takeshi, as we understand his screen name is. And so Beat Takeshi plays the main character who is a cop, or a former cop, I should say, because we realize throughout the course of the, the very intricately structured narrative involving time jumps and uh, well-paced editing and the like, that this is a uh, this is someone who has experienced a tremendous amount of personal and professional tragedy and loss. The personal loss has to do with his his wife and his child, and we understand that uh, they lost a child uh, some time before, and we understand that his wife is suffering from terminal illness. Then, in terms of the professional side, we have, as I say, he was a cop or former cop, and we realized that there was a terrible incident involving a suspect and gunfire and uh, leaving a colleague killed and other colleagues injured, and one in particular was so severely injured on the job that he became paralyzed. So, uh, and he experienced a tremendous deal of personal and professional loss himself. And so, uh, the Beat Takeshi character not only has to deal with his own loss, but he also has to deal with the feelings of guilt and responsibility vis-a-vis uh, -vis the loss and injury and death and tragedy that has occurred to his colleagues on the job. And so there is a lot on the conscious, if you will, in terms of the guilt-ridden sense of responsibility that the main character feels. And it is so filled with a lot of punch and emotion. Then to throw into this mix, we have uh, Yakuza loan sharks, we have uh, bank robberies, and we have uh, chases, uh, we have uh, police pursuit, and we have in the mix along the way the 
brilliant flashes of energy and violence that are now very typical of a lot of the works of Kitano, uh, Takeshi Kitano. All in all, this is a film that I would say is punctuated with a, an overarching sense of sorrow and contemplation uh, for the things that people have lost and how they are dealing with that loss in the present and the choices that they make going forward. This is, in essence, the film Hanabi. So with that, I think we can say that this film has an incredibly established sense of sorrow and tragedy and remorse and guilt that is due to, I think, the weight of the responsibility and guilt felt by the main character, the Beat Takeshi character. And we see, therefore, that his existence becomes very precarious. We see the threat of police apprehension. We also sense the threat of the Yakuza violence. And you also sense the threat of a kind of impending doom. But this is all taken in the incredible Kitano style, such that he presents a story involving a character laconic, moody, but also very intelligent, very witty, very funny, and also having a devil-may-care attitude because uh, of the weight of the various situations that are confronting him. And in that sense, the main character here is a very typical one in the Kitano world. In other words, to put it another way, he is an incredibly dangerous character indeed because we realize that from a certain point of view, he has nothing to lose. And if that's the case, then my goodness, watch out because if he gets mad, he will get really mad indeed. And so that becomes part of the, the, the for lack of a better word, the charm or the hook into the film because uh, up to now we have always been uh, uh, following the performances of Beat Takashi, and he always plays these tough guy roles and uh, oftentimes portraying them with a sense of, of comeuppance and justice. And I think we get that sense here as well. He's not a, a purely uh, morally pure character. On the contrary, there are some morally ambiguous aspects to the things that he does and to the various acts that he carries out. But all in all, we still understand his story and his journey. And though we are uh, sympathizing with his plight, and therefore we are, I think, very much following him and his journey throughout the film in a very engaging type of way. This is also to say that the film itself is another incredible mix of the Kitano traits that make his films very powerful. So we have the use of, of well-timed and well-established editing in order to augment or support these sudden bursts of frenzied energy that take place in the form of violence or the form of, of, uh, of sudden shocks to the system, the like. And this is uh, juxtaposed so brilliantly with the sense of the serene and the quiet and the peaceful. And so we are very much on edge. And again, it's presented in a way that is not uh, maybe quote unquote typical of the police uh, crime film genre, but in fact, it is done using quiet shots, done using close ups and stillness and uh, nature and serenity uh, and uh, this therefore can be said to be perhaps in a brilliant way almost antithetical to the gangster police drama which is another way to say that it's a, a brilliant example of Kitano's uh, film uh, cinema grammar. There is also a sense of the way in which Kitano has been employing certain symbols or certain aspects or representations of Japanese culture in his films, and he seems to be turning them on their heads, sometimes for comic effect or sometimes to uh, show or display aspects of character development or 
uh, both things at once, plus other things. And so here we get wonderful examples of the serenity of nature in the Japanese countryside. We get some, for example, beautiful shots of Mount Fuji. We get some lovely shots of, of uh, uh, temples and also the, the countryside and uh, Japanese-style inns and uh, uh, the, the beach front and the sea and the coast. And I think we have, therefore, this sense of almost the postcard-like uh, presentation of the symbols of Japan. But at the same time, he turns them on their head because uh, we, we uh, see that they are not straightforwardly presented, but rather they are given a certain twist. Uh, perhaps the, he is speaking to a kind of rigidity of, of, uh, of Japanese society that needs to be shook up, that needs to have a little bit of, of, uh, of, a, of an energetic spin to it. And that's what uh, Takeshi Kitano does. And he applies it in a way that uh, has a certain comic effect, but also it really brings home the notion of the characters having nothing to lose because of the limited time that they seem to have because of a sense of an air of tragedy or sorrow. So I think that helps to push forth the further character development of the, of, uh, the various personas and people that we see, thus making each of these moments that could be said to be comic sketches also poignant from a character development standpoint. So I find that uh, combination to be absolutely brilliantly applied. This is also uh, a great example of the Takashi Kitano style in terms of the, uh, the, the actors, the performers that we see. We have uh, seen many films involving a lot of characters and a lot of uh, familiar faces, and this is no exception to that. So for example, alongside with uh, beat Takashi, we have uh, great performers such as uh, Ren Osugi or um, uh, Susumu Terajima uh, or Hakuryu or Yuko Daike and others. And uh, they all give these uh, well paced and uh, very dramatic and very poignant performances. Uh, for in particular, uh, Susumu Terajima. And, and also uh, Ren Osugi. And Osugi in particular has a very difficult role in terms of what happens to his character and how that, that set of circumstances affects him uh, throughout uh, a good portion of the film. And so he provides this well-grounded sense of, of, of loss and a real human tragedy uh, that is punctuated every now and again with these great moments of humor. And so Ren Osugi is, is fantastic here. And he creates a nice combination, a nice chemistry with uh, Takeshi Kitano. Which brings me also to another point about this film, which is I love how this film focuses in also on um, uh, uh, pairings. Uh, we say in Japanese, kombi. Uh, which is short for combination, which is referring to the notion of a pair, uh, two people, one person and another person. So, for example, the uh, detectives, um, Nishi and Horibe, so this is the uh, Beat Takashi and uh, Ren Osugi characters, and they have a certain type of relationship and background together, and their own stories lead to their own personal tragedies and, and losses, and how they deal with those losses is the focus of the film. Uh, but what's really nice is they have this really wonderful air of, of, uh, of uh, chemistry together, which is very reminiscent of the notion of, of the comedian style of manzai, or the, the idea of two comedians pairing up and uh, having uh, comedy routines together. We call that manzai. And Takeshi Kitano is a comedian, and he, uh, in his early phase of his career, he was known as one half of what's known as the, the Tsubito, uh, the two beats. And so he was also a manzai comedian himself. And then his career later developed in a different direction, of course. But he has his roots in manzai, or the, the, the paired comedian routine. 
And so we see in a lot of his other films, uh, like Kids Return or even Sonatine or uh, Scene at the Sea, etc., we see focus on pairs, uh, which I think is very much in keeping with the Manzai tradition. And in Hanabi, too, we have this uh, pairing uh, focus, not just these two characters, but other characters that have certain pairings, which add to this idea of, of uh, um, in, in Japanese, we, we say tsuko, uh, tsukomi and boke, uh, or the, uh, the, the kind of chemistry that is developed in the manzai, the, the typical manzai routine. And so we have, therefore, situations which can allow for echoing or connections to the established comedian presence of Beat Takeshi, at the same time focusing in on the expressions of character development in the world of the film. And so we have this wonderful, almost paradoxical combination of the funny and the tragic, especially weaved into this film. And I find those moments to be uh, very powerful and very poignant while bringing a, a smile to one's face, which is at the same time filled with a lot of irony and emotion and uh, sympathy and uh, a sense of sorrow and contemplation. So uh, there is a lot going on with each of the moments, even the seemingly quiet or funny or humorous ones. There is always something lurking in the background that can be said to be uh, impending doom or sadness, which I think is a very difficult thing to achieve, but uh, Kitano achieves it with great skill and aplomb in this work. And also, it's uh, an amazing achievement because uh, the way in which the characters are developed uh, gives a sense of uh, varying mixes of style and cinematic presentation. The One of the other great pairings of this film is the pair of uh, Nishi and his wife, so Beat Takeshi and uh, uh, Kayoko Kishimoto, and they play the couple. And what's so remarkable is that, well, first of all, the uh, Beat Takeshi character is himself laconic, so he doesn't say that much on screen. But what is even more remarkable is that uh, the wife, uh, Nishi's wife, also is very quiet. And so these two characters are seen uh, uh, almost entirely without any dialogue between them. And still, we understand what their story is, what their stories are, and we can follow them uh, throughout their component of the film. So this is, in a sense, almost like silent film uh, grammar being employed to this sound film. It's not a silent film, uh, don't get me wrong. It is a sound film with sounds and dialogue and, and music. Uh, the great uh, Joe Hisaishi music uh, is, you know, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, but uh, it does employ these moments of silence. And it, this is extraordinary, too, when we think that these moments of silence carry themselves through even between the scenes between characters that are among the main characters of the film. This is very reminiscent of, say, an earlier Kitano work, A Scene at the Sea, where we had uh, the main characters there essentially having uh, wonderful scenes together and we follow their story, but there is no dialogue shared between them. And so that is almost like a silent film narrative played out in the sound film. The same is true, or similar types of grammar constructions in cinema, I think, are at play here in Hanabi. And so that can be said to be, in, in a way, a kind of, of Kitano, uh, Kitano use of silent film grammar that we saw in an earlier work again applied in this film with great skill, as well as other aspects of Kitano's earlier works. For instance, we have the police story element, which is uh, very much similar to, say, violent cop. We have Yakuza elements, too, which are very similar to, say, um, uh, Boiling Point or Sonatine. And then we have certain sketch comedy elements, too, which can be very similar to, say, Getting Any. And then we have elements of of what can be said to be 
uh, uh, looking back to the past and looking back to uh, tragedy in the past and uh, various characters and how time treats them and the roughness and the cruelty of certain cir uh, circumstances as time progresses, which can also be said to be very much similar to, say, a film like Kids Return. Then we have uh, all these elements that seem to be familiar to the Kitano universe, but then at the same time, it becomes its own thing. Uh, Hanabi does. And, uh, the, and as it progresses, we realize that this is just, uh, it, it is infused with so much emotion and so much uh, uh, heartbreak that uh, it becomes this sad feeling while at the same time being exhilarating at the same time because of those wonderful flourishes of action and energy that Kitano provides with great brilliance. And so that kind of feel, that kind of construction, I think is very difficult, but is it achieved in such a brilliant way, uh, which makes this film so memorable and so wonderful. Uh, Hanabi, it is uh, a remarkable achievement. And uh, we should say finally too, that this is another film that was made uh, just a couple years after the, uh, the accident that uh, Takeshi Kitano experienced in uh, 1994. And so he returned to the cinema scene and to the entertainment scene very shortly thereafter uh, with great triumph. Uh, but we have this film too, which marks uh, a, a triumphant return, uh, not only because it's another uh, 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 absolutely superior work of art, uh, but it's also a film where he appears as the main character. He's able again to make this film that he stars in, that becomes this, this poetic masterpiece, is another way that he has firmly established himself as being back and being back with a vengeance. And uh, it wasn't just it wasn't just audiences that uh, that felt that way, of course, but it was also the international cinema scene. And this film became a very important film for Takashi Kitano because it was the recipient of the Golden Lion Award, very prestigious, at the Venice International Film Festival. And so uh, this film, because of its reception because of its critical acclaim, its high critical acclaim, and because of its uh, sense of sorrow and, and uh, tragedy in its trajectory and its themes. This seemed also in many ways to be a film that uh, could be said to be a real important significant turning point, right? Because now uh, it was, uh, it, it, it is I mean, if it wasn't obvious before, it is certainly obvious now that uh, Takeshi Kitano is a, a force to be reckoned with in the world of cinema. And uh, this, as well as his other past films, are proof of that. And so now he becomes this, uh, he, well, he already was a kind of critical darling on the festival circuit. But now with this, it becomes unavoidable and undeniable. And so, uh, but ultimately it comes down to the film. And when we look at the film, or I do, I always see, every time I see it, a genuinely moving work that never fails to uh, make me laugh when it wants to, but makes me feel very uh, engaged uh, and also makes me feel so, uh, so, uh, how should I put it? I always want to root for the characters. I'm always with the characters and I understand uh, what their journeys are, and I follow their journeys every step of the way because I am engaged, uh, because the film engages me, and it makes me want more uh, in that wonderful, typical, and brilliant way that Takeshi Kitano uh, presents his cinema. This is, uh, again, one of his greatest works, and it still remains an extraordinary achievement in Japanese cinema. This is the film Hanabi. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. And so until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well, and please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much, as always, for your time. Stay strong, stay safe, and cheers.